Hi guys, today I'm going to be talking about using one Arduino analog input to read the value of four push buttons. So I've got a little bit of a demonstration set up here which we'll uh, go over first I suppose. Uh, I'm just using the pin 13 LED down here so that button turns the, the essentially the blink sketch on so on for a second, off for a second. This one will do kind of a double blink thing and this last button is just a faster blink sketch. And then this button will turn it back off. Now the reason why I wanted to do this is because I am running rather short on input pins on another project that I'm working on. So if I can use one analog pin for four buttons that I needed, well, that works out quite nicely for me. So I'll go ahead and show you the schematic for this thing. All right, so taking a look at the schematic here, you can see it's relatively simple. It is just a bunch of resistors and switches. So what we're doing here is basically making a variable voltage divider with push buttons. You can see I'm just using 10K resistors here, which isn't the best way to do it. Uh, the best way to do it would probably be to actually change the values of the resistors as you go down the line. But if you're only doing four buttons, uh, using the same value resistor is just fine. If you're trying to do something like 10, you might actually have to tweak the value because the further you go out, the harder it is to distinguish between the different buttons. But anyway, for four or five buttons, this should work just fine. Now on these buttons, I should point out that the sets of contacts, as they show them here, are connected together and there actually is a little link in there on the schematic symbol. So pins one and two are actually connected together on this side, even though it doesn't look like they are. And same thing with pins three and four, those are actually connected. And uh, not that that matters uh, too much because that's just how these buttons are set up. Uh, Anyway, we just have ground going on to the input of every one of these buttons, and we have a 5 volt signal with varying resistance depending on the button. So the first button would have this 10K resistor, which is, this is essentially making your voltage divider here, this 10K resistor to your positive, and then these resistors would be on the ground side of the voltage divider when you push the button. So when you push this button, it's connecting ground straight through to the uh, this side of that 10K resistor. So you're just going to read uh, zero on the analog pin here. When you connect, or when you push this button, you're connecting ground through a single 10K resistor. So you're going to read half of the supply voltage between this 10K resistor and this 10K resistor. When you connect this button to ground, you're going through essentially a 20K resistor because you have two 10K resistors in series, and that's hooked into the uh, same 10K resistor on the 5 volt rail. So that's gonna give you a little bit less supply voltage, and then the same thing here, you're going through essentially a 30K resistor and a 10K, which is gonna give you a little bit less voltage still. Now there are a couple of disadvantages to using a circuit like this. One of them is you can only distinguish the difference between one button push at a time you cannot tell if you're pushing two buttons. So if you were to hold down these two, for example, electricity will take the path of least resistance, of course, and the path of least resistance in this case is just going to be through this button and then back this way. And this 10K resistor here will not affect anything at all. So the Arduino will read that as you're pushing this button and this one will not affect anything. Another big disadvantage to this is at least to my knowledge, you cannot actually set up an Arduino analog pin to be an interrupt pin just off of a change in the analog value. So you're gonna have to pull the uh, buttons constantly if you actually want to be uh, responsive. And I'll show you the code later and kind of how I did that. And you will see with how I have this set up now, it is responsive if we have the uh, blink sketch and I just tap this button, it will shut off uh, pretty much immediately. So I'll go ahead and show you guys the code now. All right, so this is the code that I managed to come up with. There are probably better ways to do some of this stuff, but this is what I managed to come up with and it works and should give you uh, at least a basic idea as to how you can set something like this up. So anyway, starting with the top, I suppose, we are just declaring integers for the pins. Up here, we're declaring integers to be used in the code later. The void setup's pretty simple. We're just starting the serial communications and setting the LED pin as an output. 
Void read switch takes the analog reading from pin 85 in my case and sets that equal to the integer's sensor value. And then we start doing comparisons on that sensor value. But anyway, each one of these is just uh, if sensor value and essentially all this is doing is if it's between a certain value. By default, since it's a pull up resistor, it'll be at 1023. These will, well, every time you push a button, it will be brought down to a different value. So this just takes it, if it's in between 800 and 750, we're gonna set the state equal to zero. And then we're gonna put a delay of 100 milliseconds on it, which is just for uh, debounce purposes. And then the next one, between 749 and 650, sets state one. And between 649 and 425, you get state two. Between 425 and zero, you get state number three. And then there's a delay of one millisecond here. And the reason why I put the delay of one millisecond is because I kind of ended up using this part of the code as a delay. And I'll kind of explain that more in a second here. Delay is also there for stability when this is just here free running. So back up in the top of the void loop, we are printing the value and the state. So the value is just the analog value and the state is the state that gets set by the analog value. So if state equals zero, we set the output pin to low, turning off the LED and we sit there and we read the switches. If state equals one, we start a for loop because if we just did a delay of a thousand milliseconds, then what would end up happening is when you push the button, it wouldn't actually do anything. You'd have to hold the button for well, at least two seconds while it's running this part of the code. So instead what you can do is you can set up a for loop and the for loop here will count to 2000. So that gives you the entire period of the wave there. For, so it's on for a second, off for a second. That's a total of two seconds. So if this value is under a thousand, we're going to turn on the LED and then we're gonna read the switches again. And that read switch function has that delay of one millisecond in it. Of course, it's gonna be a little bit longer than one millisecond because we are doing more than just the delay. We're reading the analog values and all that stuff. So this will be a little bit longer than one second on, one second off. But anyway, it's close enough for this uh, example. And then if the uh, that I value goes over 1,000, we turn it off. So you end up being uh, half the time on, half the time off. And of course, reading the switch uh, instead of using the delay, essentially. So this is another way of doing it. Uh, on state equaling two here, I've got slightly shorter delays. And instead of doing it as a for loop like this, because that one second delay would be pretty long for trying to detect a button press. Since I'm only having like delays of up to a quarter of a second here, I can just put this read switch function in between the delays instead of having to go through all that work with the for loop. So this is the one that turns the, uh, well, it's kind of like a little double blink effect. So it's uh, on and off for a hundred milliseconds in there twice. And then it waits for another quarter of a second. And then you're just reading the switch values in between. And another way to do it is if you're running your code really fast, this is a 75 millisecond uh, blink sketch essentially. So the entire thing only takes 150 milliseconds. And then I only have to do that read switch command once and it's fast enough to the point where it can detect the button presses still. So that's how the code works. I will add some more information into the code itself here like these comments and I will copy paste this and put it into the comments of the video. So anyway guys, hopefully you enjoyed that, found it useful, and uh, that's about it for now guys, bye.